Well, it's a pleasure to have everybody join. Thank you for making time for this session that is being hosted by the Internet Governance Forum Secretariat in collaboration with Microsoft. We are exploring a series that is called Our Digital Future. And the reason for this series is to explore the links between digital transformation and cybersecurity, specifically in developing country contexts. And we're doing this in the spirit of the SDG 16 and SDG 9, which are respectively on strong, peaceful institutions and also on in the innovation, industry and infrastructure. And in the context of this series, we're looking at one particular topic on the digital transformation front, which is internet connectivity. So I'm pleased to hand over to Jean-Yves Art, Senior Director, Strategic Partnerships at Microsoft, who will be moderating this session. So over to you, Jean-Yves. Thank you very much, Daniel. Yes, uh, I'm very pleased to welcome you to this session of uh, the series, Our Digital Future. Uh, as Daniel just said, I'm, I'm Jean-Yves. Uh, I'm a Senior Director uh, at Microsoft in charge of strategic partnerships. I'm based here at Geneva. The series, Our Digital Future, um, is um, a, a set of capacity building workshops which focus on the digital transformation of developing countries. Uh, it is organized by Microsoft and by the Secretariat of the UN Internet Governance Forum. The first workshop, as Daniel just mentioned, took place in, in September, and uh, the, that workshop was looking at cybersecurity, stability in the cyberspace. The session today um, will discuss another major issue, uh, and it's really an important one. Um, it is how to connect the world's 3.7 billion people on this planet that are not yet connected to the internet. So it's all about connectivity. And uh, as we did in fact in September, uh, we will discuss uh, this issue of internet connectivity in four different um, breakout rooms at some point uh, in, in the session. Just give me one second. Fuck, over. Uh, it always happens uh, uh, at the moment where you don't expect that, and it shouldn't happen. So, very insistent. Um, but... So we'll do this, um, we'll have this um, uh, session on connectivity dealing with four different aspects. The four main achievers of connectivity, which are affordability, affordability of the connection of the uh, devices of the data plans, adoption, and by adoption, we mean digital skilling, how once you have the access, how can you use it to the best of your uh, possibilities, the question of access itself, and by that we mean the investment and the infrastructure uh, in the networks to get access to the internet, and finally the demographics of the internet access, and in particular whether different uh, groups of population, uh, different categories of population face different issues uh, in accessing the internet. Each of those uh, topics will be introduced initially by a speaker uh, from Microsoft or from the IGF Secretariat. Um, and then we will have a, deep, a deeper discussion in uh, breakout rooms um, before reconvening for a final plenary where the uh, discussion leads uh, will share the outcome of the discussions. So at this stage now, please let me introduce uh, the, 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 the four speakers uh, who will uh, tackle uh, each of those four different neighbors that I've just mentioned. The first is uh, Dr. Uh, Raquel Gatto. Uh, Dr. Gatto is a Brazilian lawyer. Uh, she has been passionate about internet governance uh, for the past two decades. Uh, she's working as an independent consultant to facilitate the policy network on meaningful access. Uh, she is currently a director for the Institute of Digital Development um, for Latin America and the Caribbean. Prior to this position, she was a senior policy manager uh, at Internet Society. She also served as a member of the IGF multi-stakeholder advisory group from 2017 to 2019. So lots of competencies. Uh, but I have one question to you, Raquel. If I had the opportunity to give you a superpower, not necessarily for this session, but if you had a superpower, what would that be? What is it that you want? 
Thank you so much, uh, Jean, and uh, for the question, because I'm going to be creative. I would create a new superhero, perhaps a spider woman, uh, who would lay nets around the world to connect everyone everywhere. So that would be my superpower, layering nets everywhere. <laughs> Well, that is uh, a very opportune uh, superpower, very, uh, very able for this for this session. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to, to the session. Um, second speaker is uh, Roberto Zambrana. Uh, Roberto is an electronic engineer with a master's degree in telecommunications, uh, working in the field of infrastructure and internet governance for more than 20 years, uh, same length as Raquel initially. The past 10 years, um, have been, uh, he has been leading the ICT sector in the local government of uh, La Paz City. He teaches at several universities uh, for both undergraduate and postgraduate uh, programs. He's also an instructor of ISOC Global Training Program. He coordinates the Bolivian National Regional, uh, Regional Initiative, and he's currently serve, serving his second year as the um, Internet MAG member. Roberto, a superpower for you, what would that be? Hello, Jan, and hello, everyone. Uh, well, uh, this, if it's uh, that simple to choose one, I would love to have this um, possibility of changing reality with the snap of a finger. So if I could do that, I will just snap and have all these 3.7 billion people connected. Well, that's a nice challenge, and that's a nice superpower. <laughs> and there would be many other things to do if you have to change the world for the better, I'm afraid. Uh, but it's great to have you with us uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, uh, Thank you. speaker, uh, Daniel Brown. Uh, Daniel is Associate General Counsel at Microsoft. He's leading the corporate, external, and legal affairs team in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, Daniel is based at Dubai. Uh, and his team includes uh, legal and government affairs professionals located in 10 countries uh, in the region. Um, and those uh, lawyers and government affairs specialists uh, are really providing frontline support to the Microsoft business uh, in the region. Daniel, uh, what would be your superpower? That's a great question. And I thought about this for a while. Um, I think I think the, the the superpower that I would choose would be to to time travel, but importantly it would be to travel back in time. I don't really want to be able to predict the future, but I would like to get back in time and just you know view the world as it was to learn a little bit about history and to actually see it unfold. But again, back in time, not forward looking. Okay, well, uh, no discussion about uh, optimism and uh, <laughs> or other thoughts that come to my mind when I hear you. But it's great to have with you uh, to have you with us uh, uh, for this session. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, last but not least, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Gada Gada Karipa. Uh, Gada is the director of Microsoft Philanthropies for the Middle East and Africa. Uh, Microsoft Philanthropies focuses on supporting nonprofits uh, and underserved communities in the region where you work, Gada, but worldwide, but in particular in your region as well, uh, to drive access to digital technologies and more broadly uh, to drive uh, digital inclusion. So that is really the focus of your work um, in uh, Middle East and Africa. What about the superpower for you, Gada? Uh, it's actually very similar to uh, Daniel, which is not a surprise since uh, history and archaeology is a bit of a passion for me. But I would love to actually go back in history to meet uh, the amazing people who came up with breaking through innovations with very primitive, limited resources. Who wouldn't want to meet the person who engineered and built the first pyramid? Super, very nice. Okay, so uh, we have two Microsoft people, uh, four looking technologies, uh, um, interested in going back to the, to the past. Well, welcome all. Uh, we are going to talk about, um, I hope uh, very much, uh, a promising future. Um, so um, before uh, I pass the floor uh, to uh, your, to all of the, the four of you, uh, to discuss the four different elements of uh, connectivity that uh, I mentioned uh, initially. Uh, I think it would be good uh, to maybe take a little bit of the temperature uh, of this room, see where we are, uh, see what's the view of 
um, our audience uh, today on internet connectivity and more specifically, where do you all think that we stand uh, in terms of um, internet connectivity? Um, where do we stand on uh, the demographics uh, of connectivity? Uh, is, are there really differences between different dem demographics, different groups of people and access to, uh, to uh, the internet? Um, how can we deliver, um, uh, how do we deliver uh, internet to all the demographics? Do we, dis do we do this in, in a good way, bad way, or, um, or maybe um, uh, it will be more difficult to do that? Same thing with uh, investment and infrastructure. Um, are we really on track to deliver investment in infrastructure needed by 2030 to provide access uh, to the internet for all? Um, same question with affordability, same question with skilling. Are we on track to provide affordability? Are we on track to provide digital skills to facilitate universal adoption and uh, application of the internet by 2030? So this is um, the, uh, the poll. Uh, I hope that the question uh, will appear with an opportunity for you to vote. Yes, here it is. So um, please take a look at the four questions I, which I've just outlined. And um, we'll take a couple of minutes to enable you to respond and then we'll see uh, what the results are. Do we have already the, um, um, the results of the poll? If we have them, I can tell you, I cannot see them. So I think, um, oh, there we are. Okay, great. So uh, demographics. Ah, that's interesting because huh, I find it super interesting. Um, uh, we are a total of approximately 50 participants. And as you can see, um, the, um, uh, the views are very equally shared or more, more or less equally shared between uh, those of you who think that we are on track to deliver internet uh, to all demographics. Uh, we are on track to uh, deliver the investment and the infrastructure needed, um, um, or uh, we're on track to be, uh, deliver uh, internet uh, connectivity at uh, affordable cost to all, um, or to deliver uh, internet uh, digital skills um, to, to get access to the internet. And on all those four questions, it seems that the views are equally shared between the audience, yes, no, maybe. So, um, that's interesting. Um, no clear tendency uh, of whether we have achieved or we are close to achieving this. Um, I think it was good to have this um, uh, poll, these views, to get a sense of uh, where you, in the audience, you stand on the issues. With this uh, in the background, uh, let me now uh, turn to uh, the speakers. Um, and let's move, in fact, to the core of the session. Uh, the first one um, whom I would like to, to invite uh, to give us and share views is uh, Rachel. Rachel, um, may I invite you to provide um, your sense of um, how um, the demographics uh, are working? Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, how we can ensure that all demographics have access to the internet by, by 2030, that no one is left behind? You have three minutes to pitch uh, your views on this question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Geneva. And again, uh, thank you for the invitation and for the opportunity to speak today uh, directly from Brazil online. And I'm sorry, I have a plane for those that are missing airports. <laughs> it's crossing just right now. <laughs> but um, I, I hope you could hear me. Uh, so um, as you were mentioning, I'm facilitating right now uh, the new intersessional work from the IJF. 
uh, which is the policy network for meaningful access. And that's pretty interesting because one of the first uh, tasks that this group uh, delved into was what does meaningful access mean? And you might uh, think that's answered and uh, well, you have so several working definitions around, but the truth is meaningful access means different things for different people. And that's the first thing we realized that we were going to have uh, to frame a little bit further uh, and how we are going to work this, uh, this breakthrough, right? <laughs> in terms of a new policy uh, intercessional work. So basically, uh, what I would like to flag for this session, and we are going to have time to discuss further in the, into the, the working groups, the breakout groups, is that for the first question, are we leaving anyone behind? Yes, definitely yes. We are leaving half of the world behind. Uh, there are stats that varies, of course, uh, from regions, uh, from different regions that are a little bit better in terms of internet penetration and uh, connecting people. But the truth is, we're far behind, whether it's half, it's one third, or, um, you know, put your number, we're still not there. And in less than one decade, it's going to be a really great challenge to get there. So that's my first, it's not a dramatic intro, but it's a realistic fact that we are far, far behind in connecting people, in connecting those that are in the most remote and underserved areas. And here comes uh, the other thing. Um, when I was mentioning in terms of what does meaningful access uh, mean uh, and, and, and how this group uh, uh, go into the challenge, we realized that there is a common will. It is a common will among all the, the, the stakeholders that this is an issue and this is an issue that we need to tackle with priority, the pandemics and how uh, the digital uh, world became our lifeline uh, has shown us that this is a priority to connect everyone, to connect everywhere. But then there are efforts. This is not a new issue, right? This has come from uh, several years. Uh, this has been mentioned in several meetings. This has you know, been in the agenda from uh, multiple stakeholders that are involved, but yet we're not there. So there is will, there are efforts. What are we missing? Where are where is this gap between uh, we know what needs to be done, we know that perhaps some of those actors are mapped of what needs to be done, so it's time to do it. So that's another um, uh, let's say pretty strong consensus from the PNMA that is uh, that is surfacing. And then because uh, this is only the pitch elevator, <laughs> I'm just going to put the three challenges that are probably intertwined with my colleagues. Uh, I thought this was very interesting uh, with the, the poll results because uh, first, when we talk about connecting everyone, right? Uh, it, it is intertwined with connecting uh, everywhere. It is about laying the, the proper infrastructure. Um, and it, it is even harder in places um, that you don't have necessarily the commercial incentive or um, let's say the demographics, you have less uh, people that would give you the return of investment for laying this infrastructure. But yet it is uh, needed. And so what are the solutions that we are going to look for? Um, I might have some answers. You might hear that in the breakthrough or at least some examples, not answers, but some examples on how this is, uh, this is happening. But it's also about once you got this connection, right? When you, you, you got online, what is this kind of experience that you were going to get? So when we think about meaningful access, um, you open up this other um, uh, fronts, uh, let me say, these other layers, if you will, uh, in terms of thinking, what is the experience that each is are going to, to have? And third challenge is, how we are going to keep this happening, right? Um, how we are going to keep people connected while 
um, infrastructure fails or uh, there are shutdowns and blockings. So anyway, I know I'm running out of time. I'm sorry, I, I, I mentioned I was passionate about the issue. So uh, thank you very much, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rachel. Yes, indeed, you sound passionate about the issue. So uh, let me now turn to uh, Roberto. Um, Roberto, uh, you are going to facilitate a discussion about infrastructure and investment um, needed to achieve connectivity for all by 2030, a topic which Raquel has already touched upon. But I would like to hear your pitch um, about um, the discussion that you are going to have. In your view, what is missing uh, and, and where is it that investment infrastructure is missing? And uh, what's your view on achieving uh, those uh, investment in infrastructure by 2030? Do not get to no, no, I, no, I have. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jan. Um, well, about this, I will first would like very, very quickly. I would like to share with you some facts, which is uh, those facts were pres presented in, in some reports, a set of reports for by the ITU early this year, and I would love to to share them because I think it will give us a very nice. A picture of what we have regarding infrastructure. I don't know if you can see the screen. Yes, we can. Fantastic. Great. Three minutes. Sure. These are the digital trends in different regions of the world. And the important facts of this are these numbers. It's really uh, good to know that indeed we almost have uh, half of the population not connected yet. We just have a penetration of 51 percent, but uh, as we can see, we didn't do the, uh, enough work regarding fixed broadband connections. We have more of the connections currently uh, with mobile internet connections, which is also good because this gives us a, a, a good future regarding this technology, hoping that it's going to be the final solution to connect everyone in the, in the near future. But still, another thing that shocks us for sure is that we, uh, regarding the coverage of the mobile connectivity, we can see that we're almost 100% of, of, of our coverage. I'm talking about 4G, which is a very good uh, uh, kind of connectivity. We're near 85%. Uh, it's an estimate for 2020. But still, we know that uh, um, almost half of the population is not connected. So what is missing, as you were asking? Mm -hmm. The other important thing to recognize is that uh, regarding uh, connectivity between urban areas and rural areas, of course, most of the rural areas are not connected yet. We're about 30% as we can see. So that's something that we need, we will need to work on. So the question is, and I'm going to stay, stop sharing. So if we do have all this kind of connectivity already in place, what are the problems that are preventing us to get all the people connected? And one of the answers is regarding, and I'm sure one of our colleagues is going to, to touch this aspect is have to be with affordability. Um, it's maybe a time to analyze what are the, the different uh, business models that we have receiving different kinds of donations, particularly regarding mobile services. Because if we are looking to some other emerging technologies like the five generation of uh, mobile communications, 5G, then uh, we, we will not be able to think about the possibility to take a bunch of this kind of, of uh, technology if we don't change, if we don't think about a different and creative ways to provide this kind of services and also to change the current business model. So I think this is one of the, the different uh, uh, subjects that we're going to discuss in the breaking group. So again, what's missing? I take the, the question as you said before. Thank you. Thank Jim. you very much, Roberto. Uh, that's a very, very good pitch. Uh, super interesting uh, presentation that you made there um, of uh, this, this difference between uh, coverage, which as you pointed out, uh, is almost global today and actual usage. Um, and how is it that, I mean, the, the, the coverage is over there and everybody has uh, theoretically access uh, but there is a big difference in terms of 
uh, actually using uh, the connectivity which is available. And uh, in fact, it's a very, very good segue in my view to uh, the two uh, next speakers, um, Gada and uh, Daniel, uh, who are going to talk, um, uh, each of them in their own um, breakout session of various aspects of this usage uh, of the internet. First, um, Gada, uh, it's going to be your turn now. Uh, your table is going to discuss the question of affordability. Um, and when I introduced you, you said, yes, it's going to be total uh, affordability. Um, so uh, can you please elaborate on this? Um, and also in three minutes, if possible. <laughs> OK, so very quickly, uh, we have seen how the pandemic has emphasized the importance of connectivity in work, education, health and life. But it also has in, uh, emphasized the gap between rich and poor communities reflected in the resilience to cope with the crisis. Uh, while connectivity has been the source of technological leapfrogging in Africa, Africa is not nearly connected enough. It is still the continent with the lowest internet penetration rate at 43% of the population compared to global average of 65 plus percent. And compared to other regions, for example, Middle East is 74.9, while Asia is 63.8. You can see the differences. Uh, the difference also extends to countries within Africa. So if we look, for example, at uh, Kenya, it has an 85% penetration. While if you look at uh, Ethiopia, you are down to 17.9, or even 7.9 if you look at Sudan. Similarly, Roberto uh, highlighted the difference between urban and rural areas penetration, which is super important. One of the main causes uh, of Africa's internet deficiency is predictably cost. Africa has the most expensive internet in the world. According to the Alliance for Affordable Internet, mm -hmm. African pay an average of 8.8% .8 of their monthly income to purchase one gigabyte of data compared to 3.6 in Latin America and 1.5 in Asia. Uh, in some cases like Chad and DRC and CAR, one gigabyte was found to cost as much as one fifth of the earnings. South Africa has the highest data cost among Africa's five largest economies. On looking at the cost of connectivity, however, we need to look deeper beyond the cost of broadband to total cost of connectivity. Access to connectivity through electricity, high capacity affordable broadband internet, low cost computers, smartphones is essential. In addition, we also should look at cost of software, online tools, content localization, accessibility, and data consumption. All of that has to be factored in in the total cost of connectivity. The purpose of the uh, roundtable uh, is to discuss the consolidated innovative solutions, policies and partnerships that would lead to affordable connectivity and access to the Internet to create opportunities for people to learn, work online and access government services. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gada. Super interesting. Um, uh, presentation. Um, I'm sure that you have enticed uh, several of our participants to join you at the uh, in your breakout session. Um, I'll give now the floor to uh, to Daniel uh, to uh, lead. Who's going to lead the discussion um, uh, and the discussion on digital skilling? Um, Daniel, uh, would you outline uh, the challenge of digital skilling? Are we on track to provide digital skilling necessary to facilitate universal adoption of uh, the internet by by 2030. Where are we? Yeah, thank thank you, Geneva, and, and thanks for for the introduction, and, and thanks to to the other speakers as well. Super interesting topics, and and really looking forward to to hearing the results of some of those discussions. Um, I'll be really quick and teeing up uh, the discussion for my for my table. Uh, but I do want to just say it's an honor to be here, and it's, it's certainly a privilege to, to speak with all of you on achieving these um, our, our sustainable development goals. And then just building on, on the other topics uh, from the speakers that focused on, on connectivity and affordability, my table will consider what happens once we connect the world's remaining 3.7 billion people, and how do we ensure that they can leverage the transformative power of technology to learn digital skills and then to convert them into jobs and opportunities in the real world. 
Now, as Gata highlighted, the, the pandemic has taught us a lot about how the power of technology can help us address many of the world's challenges. And take, for example, remote learning, remote work, telemedicine, all made possible by leveraging technology and all of which are essential to navigating the pandemic. For government, citizens, employers, employees, doctors, nurses, frontline workers, all of them. But as digital transformation accelerates and as others highlighted, we gotta make sure that everyone can benefit. And digital transformation that was projected to happen over the next decade, literally happened overnight and we're in the middle of it right now. And that rate of acceleration has exacerbated a widening skills and employability gap, and especially in least developed countries. Now, of course, there's a lot of great work to be done, um, and there is work being done by, by so many of, of you on this call, but so many organizations and governments around the world. But as the poll results suggest, we still have a lot of work to do. And Janine, to answer your question, you know, where are we? Gosh, 39% felt like we're on track, which isn't terrible, um, but we have a lot of work to do. 30% feel like we are not on track, and then 30% feel like we need to do more and, and maybe we're on track. I look forward in my table to discussing how we can build digital literacy and digital skills at scale to enable every person around the world to compete and succeed in the digital economy by 2030. Back to you, Janine. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you for uh, your presentation, your introduction of discussions that uh, will take place at your table. Um, I'm sure that uh, all the audience uh, that is with us today is keen to learn more, to participate, to put questions, but also to share their views uh, on the issues that you have all briefly discussed here just for uh, enablers of connectivity. Now, let me explain a little bit how things uh, are going to, to, to move. Um, each discussion will be led by uh, one of the four speakers uh, and will be hosted in a separate uh, breaking room. Um, in order to facilitate the transition from this plenary session to the breakout sessions, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this uh, session, um, you all will be uh, automatically uh, assigned to one of the rooms and that's, that's, that's for convenience only, frankly. Uh, you can then switch uh, to other rooms and go to uh, uh, work, listen, discuss uh, with the um, uh, speakers that you have just heard and that you prefer to, to engage with. Uh, and then we will reconvene in 30 minutes uh, to share the outcome of those breakouts um, and uh, maybe have further Q&As uh, among this whole, this whole group. Uh, at this stage, uh, please let me um, share, hope with you uh, that you have great conversations uh, and that you, you very much enjoy the breakout sessions uh, in which you will participate. We'll talk very soon, in 30 minutes. See you then. Hello, um, Jan, sorry, this is Luis. How many rooms do you, do you want to create? Uh, there should be four rooms. Four rooms, we will create and launch four rooms now, thank you. Yeah. Are they gonna have names so that we know which ones to join? Yes, you'll be able to figure out the right room, but we'll start them now and then it will be evident. Thank you. But soon.
Uh, hi all, this is Luis for some reason the, the breakout rooms came back to the main room, but- Yes, Molly, I'm Molly. sorry, okay. I wanted to leave the breakout room to a different one and I accidentally left, made everybody leave. Um, but there were problems with um, the who was in which breakout room anyway, because it was um, random. Maybe we can say what break, who was in what breakout room, which speaker, so people know where to go. Yes, room one, uh, I mean, the, the, the rooms have been assigned uh, randomly. In room one, uh, we have uh, Raquel Gato. In room two, there is Roberto Zambrana. In room three, there is Daniel Brown. And in room four, there is uh, Hadak Harifa. Okay, we will relaunch again. There are still 22 minutes, okay? Thank you.
I'm Rita. <clears throat> Just the three of us, I guess, in this breakout room. Hi, no, this is not a breakout room. Hi, Glenn, I'm uh, Rita. You just uh, left here. I mean, uh, this is the main room. You were in one of the rooms with someone? I can just- I, I was in the main room and then it, it pushed me to this breakout room. I didn't select it. No, you don't select it, but you, you might be with someone, with Raquel, with uh, Roberto, with Daniel, with uh, Hada, Khalifa, you know? This is the main room. Uh, it's only four of us, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you should be in one of the, of the discussion rooms at the moment. Right. Okay, uh, Amrita, how about you? Hi, Luis, I'll come back in some time because I've missed most of the conversation. Ah, okay, so I will assign you to, to the rooms uh, randomly to the ones that have less people so you can follow the discussion and then we will return to this main room in 15 minutes, okay? <laughs>
Hello, welcome back, uh, everyone. It seems that uh, looking at what I can see on my screen, we have the same number uh, of participants uh, on this screen as we had before. Uh, we went to the uh, breakout rooms, which is quite a nice technical achievement. Uh, thank you very much for, for uh, coming back. Um, uh, I hope that uh, everyone here enjoyed the discussions in, in your uh, break with the breakout table. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think the next step, this step now, is uh, for the discussion leads uh, in each of the breakout rooms maybe to explain and summarize um, the main learnings uh, and the main discussions that took place uh, in the room. So um, let's take this in the uh, reverse order. Uh, Daniel, uh, would you tell us a little bit about what comes from your discussion on uh, digital skills? Hey, Jenny. <clears throat> Sorry, I had um, somebody uh, startle me um, in my, in my house. Um, uh, anyway, it's, 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 a, it's a friendly person. I <laughs> just didn't know somebody was in my house. Um, and so everything's okay. Um, but yeah, hey, look, we had a good conversation on, on, um, on digital skill. And we started off, you know, really thinking about what's inhibiting um, our ability to, to meet our goals. And, you know, it was interesting to hear from, you know, different people from different groups um, in different locations. I think uh, one of the, the things that, you know, we, we heard is, is that there's not enough, um, you know, funding. And how do you, how do you scale if you don't have funding? Um, you know, and some, some raised issues on, on getting enough, um, getting an assessment done, you know, at, a, at scale. And how do you assess what digital skills are needed uh, we also heard people, you know, who said, you know, there's not really a, a, a framework that they can use to measure um, progress on digital skilling. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, there is another comment about, um, you know, before we start thinking about skilling, how do we even make sure that everybody actually has access to power um, and making sure that the power grid is, is, is accessible. Um, wait, wait, all, all good points. Um, we, we spent a little bit of time um, and, and we didn't get a lot a chance to spend a lot of time on it, but just thinking through, you know, what works, you know, is it, how do we solve funding? Is it through, you know, private um, public partnerships? You know, is it working with governments? Um, you know, is it, is it that we need to do other things, um, working in, in communities, community engagement with religious organizations, um, all, all good conversations there as well. Um, and then we, we actually had some conversations about other things that we should be thinking about um, in, in terms of digital skilling. Um, you know, some, some had said, let's start with the basics um, and just to, to figure out what, you know, how do you take, you know, people that are just now getting access to, to a place where they can start building skills that will lead to jobs to have a meaning, meaningful participation um, in, in society and in their communities. Well, others said, hey, we actually need to go deep on things like cybersecurity and um, you know, data privacy. So a range of different things that we needed to focus on. Um, gosh, we wish we had more time to talk a little bit about some of the other um, topics because we, we just started to tap into it. Um, but let me stop there to be, uh, you know, to make, to be respectful of time. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Uh, sounds like a very interesting uh, conversation going in multiple uh, directions uh, when I hear your, your summary. Super. Um, Gada, affordability. Hi. Uh, so we had a very uh, interesting feedback. Uh, there, one of the takeaways that the need uh, for multi stakeholder approach where government, private sector, international development agencies, and people come together to address challenges. Where people and businesses can act as a go between uh, the underserved community and development agencies who could perhaps uh, uh, provide uh, subsidies for internet uh, connectivity. Uh, there is also the importance of the government providing incentives for private sector uh, uh, to invest in pro uh, providing connectivity solutions. One of the challenges uh, that was raised is that in non-democratic countries, governments act as a monopoly and they are not necessarily interested in providing the people with connectivity since it means access to information and there is a need to educate community uh, as well as provide connectivity. 
uh, one of the opportunities also is to leverage libraries to create access uh, points. Uh, so uh, if we look at libraries that exist across uh, underdeveloped and uh, developing countries, uh, those libraries can be equipped and act as a network uh, for uh, learning and for access uh, that is affordable. Uh, and uh, I think uh, lastly, uh, also uh, the importance of uh, learning from other uh, governments, learning from uh, uh, experiences. Uh, one of the examples put forward is the uh, experience from the UK and how the UK translated uh, uh, grew their ICT sector, their internet, uh, and their internet, and how can that translate to aid programs to developing countries, uh, holding discussion with industries, uh, suppliers, and representative of the community, so that a uh, solution would come uh, from the community itself. Uh, I hope I uh, captured any, uh, all the points. Uh, but if anybody would like to add, please go ahead. I'm Hello. sorry, I didn't catch what project is that in the UK? Sorry. Uh, it was not a project. It was the experience of the UK government in uh, growing their ICT sector and their internet and how can the how the uh, how can the UK government share that experience with developing countries, uh, holding discussions with industries, uh, with suppliers, with governments, and with the representatives of the community as part of its aid for the developing country. That was one of the experiences slash suggestion shared. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gada. Um, Roberto, um, your group, uh, in which I was, uh, discussed the question of infrastructure and investment. Uh, there are some themes uh, which are common to uh, uh, the discussion that took place in that group and, and what I had heard uh, from, from Gada as well as from Daniel, as a matter of fact, but I'll, I'll go to that uh, in the end. So tell us a little bit about um, uh, what uh, came into the discussion? What were the main points uh, from the discussion? Sure, thank you very much, Jan, again. Yeah, it was an interesting discussion too. Um, one of the important subjects that we covered was related to community networks as a proven and effective way to provide connectivity, particularly to the rural areas. But it was also mentioned that it is important to have an holistic approach because um, there is, there is, uh, there are some elements which need to be taken care of before, like power in, in in different regions of the world. Power is a very important aspect that, when uh, someone, some group is planning to make an investment regarding uh, community networks, that it's important to to also think about these other uh, collateral elements that need to be taken care of. Of course, another important thing is the skills to, um, in this area in community networks, the skills to, uh, to be provided to the people that actually are going to uh, de deploy and also maintain this kind of networks because otherwise uh, the, the sustainability of this kind of efforts will be compromised. Um, it was also mentioned that um, this public-private uh, partnership will be a good approach in order to have this kind of solutions, but uh, always empowering the community because uh, the people knows what they need, what they want, and it's important to empower the community so they understand how uh, they could actually work in this sustainability area, which is really, really important. The other thing that was mentioned was regarding security, because with all these efforts of providing public services, public on free internet uh, connections, for instance, wireless inter internet connections, then uh, uh, the, the, the people is exposed to different threats and security is some other important aspect that need to be taken care. And of course, the, 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 the prices and the business models are, are another issue that need to be 
um, analyzed and hopefully to come up with different creative ways to, to um, uh, provide uh, these services with uh, alternatives, with more affordable alternatives for the users. And this, is, this wasn't discussed in the group, but uh, I would like also to comment about this, uh, Jan, as it's related with, with incentives. I mean, the governments are already working in, in different ways trying to support this kind of efforts, but I think there should be some other, some other incentives provided to the uh, telecommunications company that actually are usually uh, um, mentioned in this, in all different discussions. And it's about the, the, to have more flexible regulations, to have a more easier access to frequencies, to, bro to, to, to a spectrum, uh, and to have um, maybe lower taxes in, and all these this efforts could perhaps be an, another way to provide affordable internet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roberto. Uh, Raquel, uh, turning to you now um, to give us um, uh, what you, the summary of what you discussed uh, on the various groups, the, the, uh, the various demographics of internet access. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Yves. And as the last group, I'm sure we are going to be repetitive in some of those challenges. But uh, basically, our group uh, uh, tapped the question of uh, anyone left behind and the interplay between the connectivity and the demographics. Um, we had representatives from Barbados, uh, two from, from India, uh, from the US and from Egypt, um, and I'm sure that uh, they can also raise some of the, the, the points uh, during this uh, very summary uh, that I'm going to do. Uh, it's interesting because we went from understanding where is the gap, so uh, who are those that are left behind, what are the challenges to overcome and bring them uh, in, uh, but also some of the experiences and best practices, as Roberto was just mentioning, in terms of community networks. Um, it was also interesting to see that there are different realities. Uh, for example, in uh, some places, uh, the issue of connectivity or the coverage uh, to get connected is not an issue per se. It's more um, of an issue of affordability or uh, having the, the proper devices or keeping the data plans. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure Gata also <laughs> Would be interesting, and we can share some of this, um, of some of these points. But in terms of who is left behind uh, in other regions, um, we could see not only geographically, uh, let's say the disbalance between uh, the rural and the urban area, but both have their gaps. So in the rural and other sub areas, um, community network was brought in as one of those experiences, but also in terms of the urban uh, connectivity and how uh, you have uh, initiatives uh, like uh, in public libraries, uh, trying to bring and to amplify this connectivity. Uh, they are so important and take down some of the myths also between the, the, uh, the difference uh, of developed and developing countries, because this is an issue that is also seen uh, in developing and North, um, uh, uh, in North America countries. Uh, in terms of uh, where are the other gaps um, uh, in, in, in uh, access to devices and, um, well, it taps also uh, in terms of affordability that have a synergy between uh, the, the both demographics and then let's say the regional disbalances, but uh, it, it's a common issue uh, to have access to the proper devices. Uh, we've seen that uh, uh, lots of families shared sometimes just one device that is connected to the internet and uh, this has uh, of course uh, lots of implications in terms of uh, the experience that they are going to have and the access the kind of access that they are going to have so uh, this is another issue that was uh, brought in by um, well uh, participants from India and the US there were a common issue and and that's very interesting to say um, in terms also of the who is left behind, um, we should mention uh, the indigenous groups and uh, the 
that are also uh, left behind in terms of uh, connectivity as, as you think about it. Um, and in terms of also uh, the difference is not only in the geographical balance uh, um, as, as we look, but also inside the population, uh, what are those groups that are left behind? Uh, and we had a very uh, strong argument about the gender disbalance and the need to, uh, to have more of uh, women um, approach uh, um, approaches to empower women to get connected and this range from having more of the role models but also to have more of the educational aspects and the cultural aspects uh, because sometimes you do have the coverage for example uh, for for getting those women connected but then it's a cultural barrier to allow them to be uh, online um, anyway it was a very interesting discussion so I'm sure I missed some of those but we have more to discuss next so thank you very much thank you very much Raquel um, as I was uh, thank you thank you all for uh, uh, this uh, very rich uh, discussion uh, as I was mentioning to one of them it seems to have gone in, in many different directions um, and obviously uh, all the participants had um, experience to share um, on the challenges, but also the solutions that they can find to the to this issue of internet connectivity. There is one theme uh, which um, I, in my, in my view, based on what I have just heard, uh, is common to three or to four, or maybe the four uh, roundtables, and um, that is the role of the communities. Um, you know, when, when we talk about connectivity, I mean, at least the way I have heard uh, people talk about connectivity uh, in the past, has always been a very much top-down approach. Uh, government must intervene, uh, we should look at this uh, at, at, the, at the global level, uh, it's a big effort that is needed, and really at a, at a global effort. And what is striking uh, when I hear the result of the discussion is about the role of the communities in um, and uh, incentivizing access to the internet or uh, driving uh, the discussions on internet access. Um, is there anybody uh, on this call, and that's really an open question to, to you, who has some experience, some experience to share about the role that communities play in providing access uh, and uh, in uh, incentivizing the development of uh, and the growth of connectivity? I think I, I've seen um, uh, some exchanges in the chat box, uh, so I'm happy to designate someone who could share uh, experience with community work. Uh, but uh, before I designate, could someone volunteer to uh, exchange experience uh, with the world of communities in providing internet access or getting internet access? Um, I, I don't mind saying something, but there might be others uh, who are more directly involved and can claim some credit to really supporting this movement. Um, I'm, my name is Sean O'Shokru and um, I'm, well, I'm an evaluator as well as an activist in various areas of communication rights. But I, I just happen to be beginning the evaluation of the LOCNET initiative, which is to connect the uh, uh, un unconnected or uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very major um, global program and uh, it's run by the Association for Progressive Communications with Risa Matica, but it has an awful lot of partners and ISOC and others who also came in on this here have also been active in the same area. And there's a lot of actually cross fertilization going on within the community networking world. Uh, um, it's, it really is quite, it's come on very significantly. I, I was surprised because I was involved years ago and uh, in, in writing a book about 15 years ago for uh, UNDP on community networking in the early days. And then to be asked in to have a look uh, again now, I can really see there's quite a strong impetus behind it at this point. And there is a kind of movement emerging, you could go so far as saying, which is connected in the different regions though, also quite regionally specific. And, you know, there are some uh, needs that are clearly identified. I, I think the policy and regulatory area is one that is extremely important. And ITU has actually recognized this already somewhat in words. And the question is, is to try to um, 
get the legislative and the regulatory changes um, made at local level. Essentially, these would recognize that, uh, you know, the, the projections that we see about internet access and about affordability and about capacities and so on are only projections. And actually they're plateauing, as we know. I, I think that it, it does show that. So if you really want to reach these areas, you need to start thinking in new ways about these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, even beyond simply uh, universal access funds and that kind of stuff. You, you need a lot more positive kind of interconnectivity um, uh, regulation. There's really an awful lot that has to be done there. And there's a, a lot of other things. There's capacity building, um, there's recognition of the model because it's a very diverse model. But certainly I, I want to give uh, time to others because I see, I think some other people I, I hope want to come in there. But I'm really enjoying just the early part of this um, evaluation. There's also a lot of publications available. You'll see them on the link that I sent there um, of the work that's been done over the last few years by really quite a lot of organizations. And, and it's not just APC or Rhizomatica who are active on the ground, mainly in Mexico and then in Latin America uh, more widely. But uh, you, you do have, um, you know, as I mentioned, ISAC and quite a number of others who are in there supporting and building something. So I, I think it's going to be a major theme actually um, in the IGF this time. I'll be going myself, not, not on this as it happens, uh, but uh, I think you're going to find that emerging as a major theme when you talk about connecting the unconnected. I'll, I'll stop there. I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean. Any reaction uh, to what uh, Sean was just saying about the world of com communities? Hello, my name is Marta. Sure. I'm from Mexico. Uh, my yes, example, please, please. I was working in Mexico for, uh, for two years in a provide, uh, internet provider company. And uh, in my experience, uh, some uh, the, co the connectivity was too hard to provide to the, the, the communities because it's too expensive, the technology. And sometimes even the companies try to make the best effort to to provide the internet was really hard. And sometimes examples, a lot of um, people try to, um, try to make the, the effort for, uh, for pay, um, how to say, sorry for my English, but they try to, to, they make a team and they try to pay for their own internet, then for sure the people is uh, open to receive the help and may, make this, this, the, their own effort for receive the internet because they have children and for sure they want to the children receive the best uh, education. And now in, in we can see in the COVID time, that is the only way to receive education. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Marta. Reaction to what Marta was just saying or to uh, uh, Sean's views on the world communities? Uh, sorry? I was, uh, thank you very much, Marta. I was just asking oh. whether there, there, there were reactions to what, uh, to, to your uh, testimony or to uh, what Sean was saying about the role of communities. Hello. Please. Yeah, uh, my name is Akitunde again from Lagos, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. All right, um, what I'd like to say is that um, the, I think it is um, important to um, grow access to interconnectivity through the communities because um, that is just the best way to reach the people at the ground level. Uh, in my country, we have the uh, federal government, the state government, and the local government. And um, sometime in the past, I think about five, six years ago or something, uh, the state government actually funded or supported the creation of um, local government hubs. Um, IT hubs in local government, different local governments across the state. I think we have about 20 local, local governments in the state here. Um, created hubs, IT hubs, uh, across each local government area. I think it was funded to just set up uh, devices and allow school children to just come. It was supposed to be more or less like a, a, um, a, an internet library kind of system where you have the systems and school children could come in, 
at any time have access to um, these devices and use them for training. But obviously, we have um, different issues with um, leadership in, in, in Africa generally. And most of the times, these kind of situations, despite uh, the intention and how good they look, you know, eventually they uh, get close to, uh, you have the devices bought, kept in a place, and they are not being used. So I can remember about two years ago, I and uh, my team had to work with a local government chairman to um, do a kind of uh, training for some students. Uh, it was basically more or less he was celebrating something and he just invited us in to just do that training. This was something that was supposed to be uh, a regular um, system. The devices were there. We had about um, 40 systems, 40 uh, desktop uh, uh, PCs there, it, uh, but they were not being used. They bought uh, a generating set you know, to solve the power issue, but they were not being used. Everything was abandoned. And we have this across about 20 different lo locations in, in the state. So definitely it takes a lot of uh, deliberate uh, 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 intention from the state because. Hello? In a place like ours where it is difficult or the, 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 I mean, a way. And once they support it, they need to probably hand it over to a private sector or somebody in the private sector to run and make it work because it just gets abandoned like it has been for a while now. So we have 20 different locations across the state, which we are working on to you know, reach out to them and see if we can activate these places again to start creating this community of to at, at least give access to people who can actually move down to the location and then use these devices for what they are meant for. The training, we will, uh, we're trying to facilitate training, trying to um, link up probably you know, in time to maybe ISPs that will be able to you know, see this as uh, an initiative they can support, create uh, uh, connections for them, and then we can bring in young people from different rural areas across the state and bring them in. Uh, community networks are actually crucial to expanding the reach of the internet to many places uh, across the world. I, that's, that's just my take. Yeah, well, thanks very much, uh, I can do that for this. Um, 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 testimony, I mean, the sharing this experience that, that uh, you have had, uh, I think in Nigeria, uh, if I heard correctly initially. Um, yes, Nigeria. Yeah, thank you. So thank you very much for sharing that experience uh, and for building on, on the discussion that we have had um, uh, on the role of uh, communities in providing access. Um, I think we're coming to the end uh, of this uh, workshop. Um, <laughs> and um, unless uh, someone has something urgent uh, and crucial to uh, to contribute, silence for five seconds. No, uh, then um, let me uh, let me thank you all uh, for participating in this discussion. I think we could have gone uh, for quite some time. Daniel, do you have anything to say? I see your hand up. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, I was so, doing a, an, a, an applause. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I uh, uh, didn't see well. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much all for contributing to the discussion. As I was saying, the, I think we could go on for, for uh, much longer. Uh, and that's a topic which has been uh, on the books uh, uh, of many organizations, including here uh, at Geneva, uh, for many, many years. Uh, what I hope is that uh, we are progressing uh, to the solution uh, that uh, the fraction of the uh, world population which is not connected is progressively reducing. Um, talking about the ITU, I know that uh, it's, it's very high on the agenda. There are many efforts which are being done to improve and grow and increase connectivity. So um, hopefully um, we, we will continue to, to make progress on that path. Um, the output uh, of this workshop will be made available on uh, the ODF uh, and so the, um, uh, the series uh, and the IGF websites. Uh, you will have access to the, uh, uh, to, uh, to the output um, uh, very, very soon. The next workshop uh, is going to take place at the IGF annual meeting, um, uh, the, the 16th uh, meeting, which will take place at Katowice in Poland. Um, and it will take place on November 6 um, at 2 p.m. UTC. I really uh, invite you all to come uh, and participate again uh, in the next discussion. Uh, I really appreciated the, uh, the, 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 the very lively discussion that we have had here. 
hope that um, you will participate in the next one, uh, either online or in person uh, at uh, Katowice. But again, thank you all very much for your participation, for your contributions, for this very interactive discussion. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in a month or so, uh, a little bit less than a month now in Poland. See you there. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you.